Today is a beautiful day, the sun is shining, Zane and Gigi just had a baby and the lockdown is about to start all over again. Hi everyone, my name is Erika and today we are creating isometric art inspired by this sims eco lifestyle. Let's start saying that I absolutely love the pack. Like since the moment I saw it, the trailer, like I was gone, like the aesthetics, they were amazing. I am an architecture graduate and I always loved while studying eco architecture, eco lifestyle and how the ways to make us use less energy. And the fact that this is now a pack, it's absolutely amazing for me. When I saw the trailer, like there was no hope I could get out of this without drawing it. So here I am, still a slave of my love for tiny houses, eco architecture and isometric art. And that's today's topic, very smoothly introduced. <laughs> Isometric art. There is a difference between uh, isometric projection and perspective. To make it short, the difference is that in isometric projection, all the dimensions parallel to the three principal axes are actually shown in their true proportions, which is very different from perspective where the objects become smaller the farther away they are. So basically, if you have an isometric object in front of another, they will still have the same proportion as in real life and not change them as we see them uh, in reality, like with a perspective point of view. So some people will start drawing an isometric by having a grid that shows the principal three axes that you have to follow, which is very important, but I am actually using a tool that uh, will make your life way easier while drawing any kind of perspective, actually. It's a Photoshop plugin called Lazy Nozumi, and it's a perfect tool for all us lazy artists that don't want to draw manually grid or find a template to use in your art. This is proven to actually save lives and a lot of work. Sometimes it's okay to be lazy and use shortcuts, so remember that. Even great masters like Canaletto used to do the same. Well, like not using Lazy Nozumi, but using other tools to not having to draw the perspective manually, of course. <laughs> So once I had the main dimensions laid down, I then created most of the details without using Lazy Nozumi, because actually I didn't want to keep the stiffness of the grid in my work, so I wanted to make it more organic and fluid. I used not just one house as reference, but also other houses, just to mix it up a bit. But this brings us to another important rule. References! They have your back. You don't know how to draw something, use a ref. You want to improve what something, use a ref. You want to make an original and believable work, R-E-F, reference. You know who doesn't use references to draw? Bob. Bob gets slowed down in his work because he's too lazy to look up for references. I'm sorry, but this time Lazy Nozumi can't save you. Don't be like Bob. Now, it's time for the second important rule that you want to keep in mind while drawing. Think about the dimension of the elements in your work. You want to use three different kinds of elements, big, medium and small. And yep, you gotta balance them all. So in this particular work, the big elements are the big shapes of the house, like the main shapes. The medium ones are some details like the doors, the columns and the turbine on top of the roof. The small ones are the little things like wall hangings, the little plants and all the little details. Also, unspoken rule number three of the isometric house creating an Instagram friendly design. Add plants. <laughs> no, but seriously, like plants are super important to, if you want to make something that is Instagram friendly. I don't know why, but people on Instagram love things filled with plants and pink designs. Don't ask me why, that's what it works. If you want some lessons on uh, how to create the best performing work on Instagram or like TikTok or other social media, I guess, uh, let me know. I can give you some. So at this point, the whole picture felt uh, very much not alive. So I decided to add some people in it, like some simps. But at this point, I switched from Photoshop to Paint All Side for drawing the characters. And I have no idea why. Like, honestly, I don't remember why I did it. So they, they basically do the same stuff. Paint tool size is just sometimes a bit more fluid in the lines. So maybe well, that was the reason. I don't remember. That was a bit of a woe. So yeah, um, it's 
join whatever software you'd like. So next step is coloring. I created first a flat base and then I added on top of it the flat colors of all the single objects. It's useful to keep the flat colors on a separate layer and that's because it will help you uh, if you want to select objects later uh, in the second phase of the drawing to either change them color or add lights or shadows. It's a trick that really helps you to speed up your work when you have a lot of objects and instead of staying and select them all single ones with the laser tool, for example. Welcome to the experimental part of the drawing. In this phase, I will experiment with adding layers on top of each other, trying to change different blend modes to find the colors that I like the most. Never forget to do the adjustment levels or you're regretting. So basically what I'm actually doing is creating levels on top of each other and filling them with solid colors. After that, I change the blending mode and try different ones. So basically I repeat the process uh, for different colors. I change the color and I try different blending modes and see which one could work better. This is a tool that traditional artists don't have and it's really important I think for digital artists to use because it can help you find the right mood for your work. But now it's time for shadows. <laughs> I usually go with the brownish warm set of shadows. I use multiply, like the blending mode multiply, if I want to give the shadows a warm feel. On the contrary, a bluish color will give more of a cold feeling to your shadows, but at the same time, it will be more realistic. This is because natural shadows outside when it's sunny are generally blue, thanks to the sky color. And I forgot to record a part very youtuber much professional but yeah uh in short you can see that for like a tiny second i added a few layers on top with some gradients usually yellowish color uh, to give more light and uh, and simulate the color of the sun i generally use uh, linear dodge add as a blending mode or uh, overlay <laughs> And now I'm coloring the lines. <laughs> in case you didn't know, there is a little button on top of the levels section in Photoshop that will allow you to color only the objects on the selected layer. It's black magic, I'm telling you. If you didn't know, like use it because it's super useful. So I changed the lines color. <laughs> Make them lighter in the areas where there is light and the sun is coming from and darker in the darker like shadow areas, if you want to keep the lines of course in your drawing. And they would change the feel of your drawing completely than just having plain colored lines. So at this point I noticed that the shadows were not dark enough, like something was missing. So I used an adjustment layer on top of my drawing and I lowered the saturation to zero. This way you can see the tones in the grayscale and it will help you to understand if some areas of your drawings are not light or dark enough. This is a very important step, so remember it. Remember it. Last step, I refine the shadows of all the single objects, the lights of the single objects and see what I was missing and make them more realistic. And this is the final work. 
I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you found it useful. And if you're still listening to this, not sure why would you? You're a true homie. Subscribe to the channel if you still didn't. And see you soon. Bye.